in three, in two, in one. I am live. How's it going, everybody? Welcome. Happy 4th of July. Welcome to the Wombats live stream. I was going to go outside today, but we made this live stream a little bit earlier. Normally, I go on at 7. Now, we're going on just today at 5 o'clock. So I know everybody's got things they're doing. And I know people are going to be live streaming later, so just kind of wanted to balance things out. Got my flag. <laughs> so how's everybody doing? Can let me turn on the live chat. I always start this thing with the top chat on, turn to live chat. So hello, everybody who's on here. Two, light, two people, two thumbs ups. And hopefully I sound okay. Can you hear me okay? Yes, no, maybe. Hello, Karen. How are you? Happy 4th of July. Oh, yay. You can hear me. Good. Okay. Um, in keeping with <laughs> my usual um, videoing habits, I got these. <laughs> Strawberry shortcake Oreos. Just like the ice cream bars. So I figured might as well try these. <laughs> so it's strawberry shortcake on a cookie. They have cinnamon bun. They have red velvet. I have not tried either of those or these ones. So here we go. Lift it up. Package still sealed. Yay! They open up so much easier in the car. I don't know what it is. I really do not know what it is. This is my first live stream taste testing thing. Let's see what they look like in the package. Oh, nice and strawberry. Here we go. Need my snack grabber. I'm not sure where it is, but you guys see my snack grabber? It's I think I just see it. One second, please. One second, please. Sometimes people don't like when you put your grubby mitts into snacks. So I got my snack grabber. This is the second time I've used these. So using the snack grabber. Mm. Mm. Those are even better than I thought they were going to be. Those are really good. I'll be right back. Now the neighbor was complaining that they could see my wall behind me, but that's that is part of my backdrop. So this is live YouTube. There we go. There we go. They they were really good. They were they were very very tasty. They were strawberry. Oh, I got the package right here. I just took some to Mrs. Wombat in the other room. Strawberry shortcake Oreos. Just like the strawberry shortcake ice cream bar. Brought to you by the Good Humor Ice Cream People. Oreo. Yep, strawberry shortcake. Very, very good. Very tasty. I am inside today. I was going to be outside. 
but the place I usually do it outside, there's no shade and it's about 96 degrees. So I figured it was a little too warm, so I figured, actually Mrs. Wombat said I should be inside, so I said, good idea. So, so I decided I would come inside. Yeah, Phil, rest in peace. He was a good little rodent. We've had a couple critters. 114, that is that is very warm for Colorado. Very, very, very warm. You're at your sisters. Well, thank you for coming by. Me, my Diana. Yeah. Uh, I always laugh when I see your voice. Not because of you, but because of the whole, yeah, Michael Jackson thing. Me, my Diana. Yeah. Having a little bit of a little bit of silver pop there. Southern part of the state. Okay. Okay. You guys just have a little bit of silver pop. I was gonna have a special guest come on with me today, but he stood me up, the big dummy. It was actually actually my mannequin that I have. He's you, you, I don't know if you've seen him or not. He's not truly a mannequin, but there's like a stunt dummy that I made out of a uh, styrofoam head and, and PVC. And we are going to talk about fireworks and mannequins. Because it seems like fireworks are always bad on mannequins. I don't know what it is. I have no idea what it is about the mannequins, but they always seem to be lighting themselves on fire, taking a bottle rocket to the eye, blowing off a hand, losing a limb. And sometimes their friends will play pranks on them. They'll be tell them to go look down a pipe, and they'll be looking down this pipe, and then <clears throat> their head comes off. <laughs> Have you ever seen those public service announcements where they talk about how fireworks are dangerous, and they, let's show you how dangerous these are. And then they just get out these mannequins and light them on fire, and <laughs> waiting on your one-eyed neighbor to start shooting them up. Is that why he has one eye, or was he originally a pirate and he lost his eye? That's how they lose their eye. Those pirates, they get a scratch in their eye, and they forget they have a hook, and they're all... It actually takes out their eye. It's never good. Bottle rockets losing by. We used to get, like, really good fireworks when I was a kid before they changed all the rules here, which is good because it's super dry. It's a tinderbox. It would go up. The whole state would just blaze in a matter of minutes and just be be done. But then we used to get some good fireworks. If you know the right people, you get the right stuff. <laughs> and being a precocious individual such as I've always been, I, I quickly made the right contacts no matter where we lived and was able to get fireworks <laughs> all the time. I was actually able to get firecrackers and bottle rockets Pretty much year-round as a kid. All right, Karen, thanks for popping in. Have a good time, whatever you are planning on doing. That's This is just kind of come and go as you are. That's why I like doing these things. They are fun. No pressure. So if people want to come in, hang out for the whole time, that's great. If you just want to pop in, say hi, and then get back to whatever else is going on, that's fine too. So enjoy the rest of your day, Karen. Have a good fourth. And I'm sure everybody – does anybody actually take any time off like before or after today, or you have to go back to work tomorrow? So I know I have to go back to work tomorrow and Friday. So, But, you know, when I used to work nights, it was weird because I would – actually go back the evening of the holiday i'd get a couple days off before and then the guy that i would fill in for sometimes no matter what the holiday was he would always call in sick or schedule it ahead of time you could like set your calendar by it you'd always take the day off so i could always count on never being able to spend a full holiday with my family usually meant 
I was supposed to start at midnight, but usually we, because there was some other things were involved, have to usually go in like about seven or eight o'clock. So, oh, working tonight, double time. Woo! There you go. Double time is always good. I never got paid extra. It's just the way, because I was supposed to work like midnight to eight. So my week would actually be like Sunday to Thursday. So I'd get off Friday morning and that would start my weekend Friday morning. Working the old graveyard shift. So, yeah. So the holidays, it was, it was pretty interesting because the neighborhood, even though fireworks were illegal, it sounded like a war zone. People were shooting off everything. I think there's even some guns going off. It was just, it was nuts. The whole sky was just constantly aglow. You could smell the gunpowder miles around. It was just, it was crazy. Fourth of July and New Year's were the two days where everything was just going nuts. It was going nuts, I tell you. So, yeah, the mannequin, he stood me up. So I had that going for me. So, but at least I'm inside. It's nice. It's cool. Got a nice cold drink. Got my feel shirt on. So it is good. Everything, everything is good. I got my my fidget spinner. And I got my my dinosaur on a skateboard. He's going to be coming up in some videos pretty, pretty soon. So look for him to just be riding through. He's not going to do any tricks, but he's just going to be kind of riding. So you'll see him later. Double time. But I did manage to bring this out. And now I, now I can see how many people show up. Because sometimes when I bring this out, the numbers start going down. So, Hey, we're in tune. Oh, I lost a one. <laughs> see, I told you. I told you I could guarantee that. about you don't want to play anymore due to copyright infringement you gotta watch out for the ebay people the ebay why do i keep doing that youtube people ebay people too because they'll try to charge you more money for things that you're trying to win in an auction but this is i know this is uh youtube Okay, Julia, we'll see you later. Have a good, enjoy the rest of your 4th of July.
have three people now. All right. How, how is all our new people doing? This is just kind of a kickback, relaxing kind of thing. watching four thumbs so everybody have a good time at the barbecue earlier or are you getting ready to head on out I know a lot of people did stuff Saturday because that way they could take the weekend to go to see whoever and then come back it's kind of weird when the holiday falls right smack in the middle of the week isn't it Just kind of one of those things, you know. For one of you guys to start singing that song, I don't know the words. It's about all I know of that one.
and it has this big old fancy flourishes right in the middle of it, right? <laughs> that wasn't really working as well. the intro goes because it's played on a keyboard not a guitar
Red, how are you? I'm just here hanging out with my guitar. Just here hanging out. Didn't have any plans. Thought I'd come on here and see who would show up and people have been coming in and out. It's been good. It's been fun. So how are you feeling today? I know sometimes you have the migraines going on and some other things. So hopefully today is a little bit better than than it has been. So is it very hot where you're at, Red? Just taking a break from everything. It's hot here. How hot is it? It's about 96 outside is why I'm inside. Got nice cool soda to drink. So I know sometimes it gets pretty hot. Okay, E5 real fills about 93 with the humidity and everything. It's fortunately where I am in California, it is it is dry. Which but it's it's still hot. But the heat and humidity together is just is just murder. I lived in Maine for two years, and yeah, humidity was was something that I had never experienced till being there. So I was like, wow, what is this? Had quite a few. They had quite a few fires. Nothing close by us, but there has been. There's quite a few. Quite a few. It seems like the fire season's a little bit later. Usually, it seems like it's start. It gets. It, what happens is we get a tiny bit of rain in the springtime, makes everything grow, and then starting about April, everything starts drying out, and it gets hotter and it gets real dry and brittle. So this is the time where things are the every little last bit of moisture is being sucked out of all the vegetation. So it'll be ready like mid-August to just ignite. You just barely look at it and it'll catch fire. Yeah, some places have bigger fires than us. Yeah. You know, it starts when it gets hot and humid. It starts up here, it starts when it gets it's real dry and it starts getting windy. We start getting these really warm winds that come in from the desert, and it starts blowing. And then one thing gets started, and just um, no water bands yet. They keep talking about it. They keep talking about they're going to charge people if you overuse water. You're only getting you're only supposed to be able to use like 30 gallons a day per individual, or some crazy nonsense like. <laughs> whatever it's just or a week or so i don't know it's 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 wild they're always trying to do weird things they talk about stuff but they never really do anything at all about it yeah everybody's all oh california it's so nice and wonderful some parts are are a lot better than others where we are you just look out the window and just see hillsides where it's just rocks and dried brush. And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 
people don't water their lawns. That's that's about what it is here. Um, I haven't really heard too much about it this year, but there was some neighbor, some communities where if you were washing your car and your neighbor felt that excessive water was going down your driveway, um, they could report you and, and you'd get fined. And you had to have like special nozzles on your hose that would shut off and on. You could only water your car or water your car. You can only wash your car on certain days out of the week. And then they and then they said some communities you couldn't wash your car. You had to take it to a, a car wash place where they'd recycle the water. Yeah, and as Mrs. Wombat said, a lot of places they um, <laughs> they re, they um, spray paint their grass green, <laughs> a red X on their doors. Yeah, yeah, the special neighbors. There's there's neighbors everywhere that just like always watching, always watching for you to mess up. So it's like, like whatever. Neighbors around me are pretty cool. So they, I don't see much of them. They don't see much of me. If they need help with something, they usually find us and we'll help with something. We we try to keep cool with everybody. So, but you know, there there are some people that just every little thing. They're just like, me. Your grass is too tall. What grass? I don't have any grass. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, you have you have people like that everywhere. Yeah, certain communities, you can only run lawnmowers on certain days. No gas-powered leaf blowers. Everything has to be approved by Governor Jerry Brown. It's just, he's not fun. He's not fun anymore. I tell you, I tell you, it's just not fun. But what is fun and what you guys missed out on earlier, the people who are here saw this. Or these. Look at those. Strawberry shortcake Oreos. That <laughs> one that smoked all the grass. Not recently. That was that was back in high school. Yeah, but not so much anymore. Oh, Jerry Brown's crazy train. Yeah, our governor wanted to have a crazy train. That's what someone was calling it. But it was a, a bullet train that would go from one part of LA to like some farming community in the middle of nowhere. And it was just like, it was pointless. It was going to be used by a handful of people rather than trying to help traffic in more congested areas. He was just, it was, it was weird. The, the dude's, he's, he's like a space cadet. He was governor for about eight years in the seventies. And then I didn't think he was eligible for reelection, but lo and behold, he's serving again. And sometimes when you see him talking, it's just you, see, you watch this old guy talk. He's probably close to 85 or 90, and it seems like he's forgetting his what his next sentence is going to be. <laughs> it's just it's just wild. <laughs> live chat are we still on there it is live tra tra <laughs> well if you need to go take care of things red it's fine we'll still be here you can take care of whatever you need to i'm sure the little baby is making things very uncomfortable whether he's doing river dance on your bladder or other portions of your body it's that's totally fine Maybe, maybe that's that's what you need to do. I don't know. I know I feel better after that. <laughs> TMI, Wombat. Too much information. Oh, 
Sorry. <laughs> I think that's the Little League team they have in Pennsylvania. Hershey, Pennsylvania, the Hershey Squirts? No? Yes? I don't know. <laughs> this is one that with the, with the vomit face. Blah. My chair is rocking more than I am. It's been too long since I've tried playing that song. Something like that. <laughs> oh, Rand's taking this in a whole different direction. I am glad that you cannot see it because then I'd have to make this more age restricted or age appropriate or something. I don't know. Speak no evil. <laughs> there you go. That's why I do these chats. I don't talk about anybody, and hopefully they'll return the favor. <laughs> That's the whole name of the game. song is hard enough for me to play being so far out of practice, let alone on the acoustic. on it. You saw the video? Going to have a concession stand? Let's try to get some GoFundMes together. GoFund. F-U-N. <laughs> GoFundMes. <laughs> oh.
mean face. A green hue is a dark green. It's probably bile. It's probably probably something you ate. It's not really agreeing too well with your tummy, or something like that. Unless you've eaten a lot of vegetables recently, a lot of leafy greens, Russian cooked spinach. Because <laughs> if you eat like a lot of uh, dark green vegetables, it'll do that to you. I know, I know. Trust me, trust me. I know, I know what I'm talking about when it comes to poo. <laughs> <laughs> I know these things. I'm not a doctor, but I play one on here sometimes. song she only coming around the mountain when she comes oh not that mountain song <laughs> Jane's Addiction's better songs, but everybody just seems to know either Ben Cut's Stealing or Jane Says. That was the mountain song, sort of, kind of. Sippa. <laughs> oh, not much. What's up? Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Uba Sippe. Do 
they look like the emoji you just put up, Red? I would, but I do not know any Paramore, honestly. I think the only song I've ever actually even heard by them was probably Misery Business or Misery Incorporated or whatever it is. But I can't even remember how that even goes. So, sorry about that. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Just burn your thumb on a cigarette. That's never good. Was a girl. Name was Red. Burned her thumb on a cigarette. Glad it wasn't her head. Burner thumb, cigarette. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I just, it seems like everybody plays those same four chord songs like G, C, D, the occasional E minor thrown in there. Nasty, nasty, nasty. <laughs> oh, sorry to hear that, Red. Gotta have those serious like breakdown parts in songs or it's all everybody's all happy. And then comes a part where they want to get real meaningful and they change it to minor chords. This is where the singer was pouring out their heart about how they were rejected or how they had diarrhea coming down their leg and how 
overcome with emotions they are. And then here's the part where they tell you they're just joking. And he goes back into the happy part of the song. You like that? Songwriting 101. <laughs> We all get to those weird spots. You made him mad. I was there earlier. I think he was just trying to give some helpful help, some helpful advice. It's the the dad in him. He was giving you like the dad to daughter talk kind of thing. So no, nah, he wasn't mad. So so you know we just we worry about each other in this this little this little community we like to call the negative nation. And it's kind of funny we call it the negative nation, but this is like the most caring group of people you'll find on the internet. And it's like, you know, all this stuff happened and different things happen. You know, none of us are good at taking people's advice, but being as old as I am, I found sometimes, and it depends, you kind of have to wait carefully because sometimes it's good to take people's advice. Sometimes I've had people give me really bad advice and I kind of thought about it for a bit and I'm like, this kind of sounds kind of, and my decision ended up being the better one. So one example of that was my dad told me not to get married because I was too young. It's never going to work out because you're only 18. It ain't going to work out. You know, young marriages fail at what, and he was just, all I heard. Yeah, I'm like, so, but Mrs. Wombat has put up with me for almost 33 years now of being married. She's known me for almost 34 years. <laughs> that is a long time. She is a very, very patient and loving woman. <laughs> She's taking care of me. Yeah. Congratulations, Angela. Good for you. 30, yeah, 33 years. Last month, just like us. For some reason, I thought you were a little bit older than me. It looks like we're about the same age. Maybe it's just my maturity level is <laughs> something like that. But, yeah, we're, we're sorry, Red. Fifty-one. All right. That's that's gonna be me in two weeks. <laughs> I don't mean to sound like uh, little negs, but <laughs> I'm having a birthday in two weeks. In case anybody's interested, <laughs> you guys can send me stuff. <laughs> uh, kid's so awesome. It's like man. We think he's uh, you'll be 32 in December. All right, cool. Yeah, little Negs, he's gonna be like a, a salesperson or or somebody. We're not really sure what he's gonna do, but he's gonna be one of those people that he can just tell you something like the. I don't even think he can tell you the meanest, nastiest thing because he's he's such a good kid, so calm and stuff. But I think he can break bad news to you, with and make you feel good about receiving that news. He's just kind of, yeah. 
<coughs> so. The red is going to be 32. Sounds like Angel is going to take care of you. That's why right. he's a good guy. You need a sweet frog onesie for little Jacks. <laughs> I don't know if there is such a thing, but there should be all these sweet frog yogurt onesies. Did you? A onesie? Nice. <laughs> very, very nice. Do they come in my size? <laughs> no. oh, Google it. All right, I'll have to check it out. That's pretty funny. Onesies. So is it under? Let's find it. I can find it. Hey, there it is, right there on Zazzle. Zazzle.com. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, man. Zazzle. So is this your merch store here, Zazzle? Yeah, it disappears, then comes back. Nice Harley Davidson tie-dye shirt. Come on, live chat, you let me down. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, that's not gonna fit me then. Eight months. Yeah, I'm sure it would be baby stuff be your largest seller. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, kids always kids. <laughs> kids need to look their best. No, parents always want to make sure they got their kids wearing the the latest, cutest thing, like the sweet frog t shirt. Or the sweet frog onesie. There you go. That's 
cool stuff there. Lots of cool stuff. Nice. <laughs> That's good. That's good. His uh, theory sister is taking care of you. That's awesome. People go crazy when the new baby comes around. Oh, new baby. Let me hold the baby. <laughs> Let me hold the baby. Well, that's good. That's good. She's got you taken care of. Now, why do they call them receiving blankets? Does that mean you have to hold the blanket out and catch the baby as it's being delivered? As it's coming into the world, you have to have the blanket right there to catch the baby. Is that what it means, receiving blankets? <laughs> or maybe that's just me thinking that that's why they call them that. I know, I know, I'm just being silly. It's a nice lightweight blanket, and, and man, kids grow fast. You're, you'll be amazed how fast this little guy's going to grow. It'll be like, wow. <laughs> as soon as you turn around, he's going to be, he's going to be into everything. Just a little bit that I've seen of you in theories. He's he's going to be everywhere into all kinds of stuff. Uh, oh no, 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 no! I, yeah, I can, I can, I can see why they, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you gotta be, you gotta kind of think. You think something's cool, you gotta kind of think outside and see how people will see it. Because sometimes people misalign your intentions. You intend to be something decent. And then they'll, yeah, you thought it was hilarious. I bet you did think it was hilarious. Uh, sometimes I've seen stuff slip through cracks and stuff, and, you're, and I'm just like, wow, <laughs> nobody censored that one, did they? Okay. Uh, doesn't have red hair like you? Yeah. You never know, he might. Um, it looked like Theory's hair was kind of, like a pretty dark brown, kind of wavy or curly. It looks like your hair is, kind of has a little bit of a wave to it as well. So you know that he's going to have some wavy hair for sure. Um, most of the time, the darker hair is the more dominant of the two, but, but you never know. His hair was jet black. Okay, well... Then more than likely, he'll have jet black hair. Well, what's funny though is sometimes, and I've, and I've shared this with other people before, sometimes those genes will be re recessive and then they'll pop their head up later on. Um, and I've shared this story. Mrs. Von Bett's probably going, not this story again. The guy that I worked with, he was from Puerto Rico, had mild olive to tan complexion, had really curly, kinky hair. And his hair was black, and his mustache was black. So I met his son, and his son was in high school at the time. His son looked exactly like him, but he had red hair. And I met his wife, and my friend's wife was, was Hispanic, so she had dark hair. But the grandparents on both sides, both the maternal and the paternal, the my friend – his grandmother and the wife's grandmother both had red hair, and that red hair came and came out. Okay, you got it from your grandfather. Okay, see, it, it sometimes it skips a generation or two. So more than likely, that probably won't be a problem. If it is, there's always just for tykes, the new hair product. <laughs> like just for men, they'll have just for tykes. We'll have to get working on that. I'll, I'll come up with, I'll, I'll, I'll work on that with Angelo 
he'll talk to his R and D people, whip something together that's safe for kids, non toxic, and it won't come off when they go swimming, running, all kinds of stuff. And I'll do the infomercial and and we'll we'll get it taken care of. <laughs> Just for likes. <laughs> yeah, if it's if it's red. You know, just just embrace it, whatever, you know. <laughs> or die. <laughs> uh, there's no there's no shame in whatever you gotta do. <laughs> uh. A wig. <laughs> oh come on, Mrs. Hamid. She's telling you to put a wig on them. It'd be like Rudolph. Remember the old cartoon with Rudolph and his nose and his and his dad put the little plastic thing over his nose, and it sounded like he had like a coal all the time. Oh, he's in there. My name's Rudolph. <laughs> it's like, wow, he's got a bad speech impediment. This reindeer here, and then it like came off, and they're like, they're freaking out. It's funny, their eyes are like real little. Their eyes get like this big. They're all, his nose, he glows. Ah! <laughs> well, it's like the way they over exaggerated stuff and. In kid shows and cartoons and stuff, it's just it was amazing. But yeah, you could do, he could be like little Elvis, teach him how to play guitar, get him the jumpsuit, take him to Uncle Rico's baby emporium. You know, we'll put him to work as an entertainer. <laughs> You're pretty close to um, Atlantic City, I think. So as soon as he starts talking, hey, yeah, I'm all shook up. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all shook up. Hey, right, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible, Elvis. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that's. You're gonna have so much fun when he gets here. It's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be the best thing for you. It, it, in spite of all the other stuff, it's. You're gonna cherish it that much more. So it's going to be good. It'll be good. So just as long as he doesn't have ADHD like me, <laughs> he'll be fine. My son does not have it, so I think it's probably environmental. Starting off at a young age drinking rock stars and stuff like that. I don't know. I'm just saying that. Is the future what's going to happen in the future? You just... You just got to take things one day at a time and and do the best you can. You plan. It seems like no matter what you plan for, things always change. Things always, always change. No plans are ever set in stone. So you just try to take things and deal with them as the best you can. I'm still learning that. So, yeah, still, still learning as I go, and I've been around for a long time. Hopefully he won't ask for a very long time, and you can just Simply leave it as that he passed away before you were born. He died before you were born. And, you know, in the future, I mean, that's not that's not lying to him, but you can spare some of the information from him. Just remind him how much that, you know, the theories lo love the idea of him being here and really wishes that he could be here with them, but Things happen in life, and just yeah, exactly like what Mrs. Wombat said. Just remind him that, remind Jax that, that his dad loved him very, very much, and you know, it's 
but then won't be for a while. And then, you know, maybe as an adult, he'll want exact details of what happened. And then you can tell him to proceed with caution. Yeah, just just remind, just just tell Jax every day. I'm not going to call him Jax. I'm, I'm taking the, the liberty of, of shortening his name to Jax. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Jackson, just tell him every day that his daddy loved him and his daddy was excited for him to be here. And things happen that are, aren't are always good. And he, he died before he could be born. And just kind of leave it at that. Yeah. Yeah, he was <laughs> he was really excited. He was Yeah, it does. It's it is. It's it's really sad because yeah, he was he seems like Super, super excited, and then, and I'm sure you were getting excited, and you guys were making plans, and then things just things happened. Yeah. Yeah. yeah things don't always. Things don't always go. As planned, and we just gotta, gotta know that every day is a gift, and just treat it as as such, and be extremely grateful for the times that you have with with people that <laughs> you can raise them. But to his dad stands, I'm I'm sure you can. You you know what theories would have wanted him to to have, and how it'd be, and and I'm, I'm sure you're gonna do fine. And especially if you stay close to his family, I'm, I'm sure that they'll go above and, and beyond to, to help you. And I'm sure at the same time, they'll respect the fact that you are still the mother, but I'm sure they'll do everything they can. They, they seem like the little bit that I've, I've gathered from the way that you're saying that your sister-in-law is doing this stuff and, and taking you in a letter and you stay with her and stuff, it, it seems like they're really nice people. And, and hopefully that'll continue. Like Mrs. Wombat said, you'll be a great mother. So it's just, again, you just you just take it one day at a time, and you appreciate what you have, and you can you can look at this as as a gift that Theory gave you, you know, the little baby. Yeah, they're great. Your mom is not. So you know when you're. You know, like I've like I've shared before. You know, my dad is not part of my life anymore, and that's it is what it is. You know, you know, people try tearing you down. You got to shut the door and and surround yourself with people who will be there for you, people you can trust, people you know that'll have your back, people who love you and, and care about you. Um. I don't know what's going on with with your family. You know, hopefully they'll they'll come to their senses and, and make things right. If they don't, they don't. You know, and you just and, and as as harsh as it sounds, sometimes you just need to 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 close and close the door and. You know, not not look back. If things change in the future, you know, with your parents, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. You can't. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes you have to. Uh, it's just that's that's all there is. That's all you can do. You know, I used to let the things with my dad make me real angry and mad and bitter, and I just got to the point where I was like, nope. He's not living in my head rent free anymore. <laughs> Booted him out. <laughs> uh, gave him the boot. So, so as far as I'm concerned, he is he's dead. You know. So. Yeah. 
So, but yeah, you need positive people. And it sounds like Theory's family was there for you and is still there for you. So, so yeah. And that's, <laughs> again, I laugh. This is the, the mean, terrible, negative nation. <laughs> but everybody's like, everybody's there for everybody. You have, you have major PTSD issues and stuff. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. I, I've been through some stuff myself. I'm not even going to even begin to start because I'm not trying to one-up you. But I, I I deal with a little bit of that stuff myself for different reasons. I wasn't in the, the service, but went through a lot of weird stuff as a kid. So so having the, the PTSD, I can I can understand that. It's no shame in having it, you know. And like Neg said earlier, if you can find somebody that you can trust to talk to, and that's the most important thing, somebody that you can trust, you know, then hopefully they can help you. And don't be afraid of, of seeking out that help. You know, but again, you got to find somebody that, that you feel comfortable around, someone that you trust, someone you know that isn't going to go flapping their gums. I used to see somebody when I was a kid, and um, they knew they knew my family. And I kind of suspected it, that things weren't being held in confidence like I hoped they would be. So I started kind of slowly changing some of my responses to the doctor's questions. And it was exactly what I thought. The person was talking to my stepmom and my stepmom driving, we drive and just kind of mentioned something. And the way she phrased it was exactly the way that this counselor had phrased it to me. And it was just like, and it was within the same week. So I was like, yeah, something was up. But A.B., it's good. A.B.'s a good guy. He's got a lot of things he's, he's working through. He's a good guy. His wife seems like she's wonderful. She seems like she's kind of <laughs> frazzled and in her wits ends by some of his antics. But <laughs> she seems to be pretty good, too. So, I would, you know, feel feel comfortable talking to A.B., I would, I would recommend it, you know. And then... There's no shame in, in seeking out a professional person to talk to as well. Yeah, okay, Crystal's good. Okay, yeah, sometimes I see her on there and she'll crash, crash, what are you doing? It's like, it's like, uh, AV, what have you done now, dude? <laughs> but yeah, she seems like she's she's an awesome lady. So, so Mrs. Wombat's good. I mean, she's put up with me for. A long old time. <laughs> uh. But if you're if you're talking to Av and, uh, and Crystal on a regular basis, I would encourage you to to keep it keep it up, keep going. And you know they seem they seem really good. And they'll probably give you pointers on how to deal with the little one. Since they have, probably going to be wrong, I think they have three. I was going to say two, but I think they have three three little ones. Three. I'm not flipping you off. <laughs> it just, my fingers blended with the background. Yeah. Oh, AV's live right now. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, I came on here earlier because I knew people were going to be going live on Live Me and, and some of the other stuff. So I will probably hit on over there in a little while. Granny. What's up, Cat Scratch Game? Are you are you banned? Um, from what? <laughs> Never mind. You see, okay. Um, yeah, I keep this. I keep this open. If people start getting out of step, I just say, you know, right off the bat, this is a, a hangout place. It's just chill. We just come. We just talk. You're welcome to come in and out if you need to. If you can only come in for a couple minutes, that's fine. If you want to stay for the duration. But we don't talk about any drama or anybody that we feel is getting out of hand because that's taken care of in other rooms. Yeah, the chats do that sometimes. That's that's not what this is about. 
I actually had Mama Bear come in here last time, and I was like, wait, who's this troll? And she's like, no, I, I really am Mama Bear. I said, okay, Mama Bear, here's the guidelines. Get out of the line. There's a the door. That was your warning. <laughs> so, yeah, so if you can, you know, you can talk about, you know, how your day went. You can interact with people. That's fine, but as soon as I see people fighting and not getting along and being all mean and nasty, you get my left foot through the door. <laughs> not literally, but you, you know what I mean. I got the wireless mouse right here at my disposal. And I got Mrs. Wombat as my wrench, and she's ruthless. She will, you'll be gone so fast, your head will spin right off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you know we have fun here it's a good time I was playing my guitar a little bit earlier but you know that was that playing some curds so it's all good you are going to see what a yeah you could off You can't put a can't put a flag in the chat. <laughs> uh, you're gonna go see what AV is up to. Okay, that's fine. Um, we'll be on here for a little bit longer, and then we'll probably head on over to to live me. Keep wanting to call it live me because I don't know. Check out live me. See what's going on. See how people are getting along over there. I still gotta set up my my own account. I signed up, but that was about it, all I'd done. Wow. Play us something. <laughs> I just put my phone, I had my phone, I just put it down right now. Twitter news. 92-year-old woman. Oh, that's harsh. Oh, man. I'm sorry. This lady right here, um, she's 92 years old. She shot her son after being told she'd be put into a nursing home. Well, it's not funny because it was a fatal shooting. But she had a pistol concealed in her robe to avoid being sent to an assisted living center. Let's find a picture of this lady. I don't know if you can see or not. Thanks for coming by. That's not my phone's acting kind of weird. Yeah, you can't tell. You can't even tell what that is, can you? No. Wow. Crazy, crazy stuff out there. She was choosing her way. So rather than going to a nursing home where you could kind of come and go as you please, she's going to a nursing home where they'll have Certain times a day to eat and sleep and be locked away. Wow. I guess you wanted to go to prison rather than that. Yeah, this is a door I found on, uh, I don't remember what it was now. One of those things, Dress Lily or, I don't know, it's on eBay. It was like 12 bucks or 15 bucks or something. It was pretty cheap. Yeah, some folks don't want to go to nursing home. Can't send me to Shady Acres. I ain't going. <laughs> it's like, wow. <laughs> That's, yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. I would have thought that story would have come out of Florida because it seems like a lot of weird and unusual stuff seems to come out of that state. Music. Okay. I, I can't play music on here because I'll get a strike. You mean this?
you're welcome. You're welcome. Doing MRA vids and other vids and all kinds of stuff. Well, I did a live taste test to start this thing out. You can watch it in the replay if you choose to do so right at the very, very beginning. But there is new Oreo strawberry shortcake. These are actually very tasty. Um, Mrs. Wombat had a couple. How did you like those, Mrs. Wombat? Were they good? Drumming on the old guitar. Kevin this thing. This is called a capo. If you've seen Nags, you probably know he's got one. I think it's like rainbow swirl or something. I had a black one. I actually had a couple black ones. People borrow them and they never come back. So I bought a blue one. I think I've got a silver one somewhere else. So I think I've got a black one somewhere else too. And then I had another capo, which I lost, but it's around here somewhere. Too much good stuff. So little time. We're glad you came by. Thank you for coming by. This is this is how it is. It's just nice, relaxing. People come in, they talk about stuff, talk about music, talk about how their day's going, how their week's going, what plans they have. So yeah, it's all good. <laughs> I haven't used this thing in like a couple of years. Don't even know what to do with it. But yeah. Like...
super sloppy. Oh well. Um, no, I don't play in a band. I just, I just play for fun. I enjoy. I enjoy playing it. I enjoy playing lots of different stuff. Um, sometimes I'll hang out with people and we'll play. I don't really hang out with anybody for a while. Just... fun chill at time i do it in the middle of the week because that seems to be the usually the only time nobody else is live streaming so don't step on anybody's toes and people can kind of come in come out whenever they want it's just chill and relaxing so everybody has fun everybody's nice to each other and so it's all good to bend acoustic guitar strings they're, they're a lot thicker than electrics i think these are 12s or 13s they're pretty pretty stiff strings technical channel how you doing She is, she is absolutely amazing. We've been married almost about that close to 33 years. Yeah, she is. She's amazing. She has a lot of uh, medical issues that she doesn't like to talk about. But, you know, because, you know, it seems like when people start talking about real life stuff, other people start to disappear and peel away and, Oh, here's someone else complaining, but she doesn't. She she tries to be super ultra above and beyond encouraging, which is which is awesome. In spite of all the stuff that she goes through, so so. But you know, she's she's a good lady. She's put up with me for a mighty long time, and I'm extremely grateful for that. <laughs> Thank you. 
usually when people are saying that I got you get me, they're asking you to sub to their channel. I know some channels don't like using the word sub. Some use bus or they'll say catch or they'll use other words. Basically, it's just saying he's saying, hey, I sub to you. Can you do me the honor of subbing back to me? That's that's what he's that's what he's getting at. Can't scratch. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes he said, I got you. You want to get me back? I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that. <laughs> but that's 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 what he means. And I'm assuming technical is a he. I believe it is a he. If, if you're not a he, I apologize. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's that's basically what it means. It's the like, Say, I got you. Or sometimes they'll say, can you bust to me? I know some of the channels, there's there's a community. Um, guy's really nice. His name's Green Bay Wacky. He's there with uh, his friend Fireman, Keb7, and some other people. And people say, hey, I got you. Can you get me back? Can you bust me? And that's what people are saying. They're, they're doing buses all the time and stuff. Let me see. Do this. I'm <laughs> suing helicopter chanters. Hey, <laughs> I I just assume. I don't know. I'm just like, until I hear differently, I go, okay. I call, you know, being in California, living here most of my life, I call everybody dude. I'm not pointing at any genders. If you're a lady or man or somewhere in between, I'll call you dude. <laughs> That's just what I do. I, just call, I call everybody dude. I've got people in trouble before because they called somebody else in their family dude after hanging out with me for a bit. They're all dude. <laughs> it's like, what? All right. I'm trying to find something here. Yeah, usually people show this or this or even this. That's the same thing. Why is it only? Oh, because it's Windows set up differently. Or this. So, yeah, usually they'll send. It'll be something like that. They'll use the emocons with the with the buses. Allegedly, uh, on here, I've allegedly, yeah. I'm used to sticking my foot in my mouth all the time. It's better to uh, ask forgiveness than permission or something. If if I screw up and call somebody the wrong name, I apologize. It's just like, you know, people go, all right, whatever. And it's like, you know, whatever. You know, people get, there's more things to get upset about than, whether whether the old wombat was confused, you know. Some of the people go, wombat. It's like, yeah, yeah, spit it out. I'm bald. I know it. All right. I don't, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So, but yeah, if you see people popping pictures of transportation on your, in the thing, they'll just. You can go. Let's see what is it. What's another one I've seen here? Um, yeah, transportation, travel activities. Yeah, if you see that, that's usually what that means. There it is. Bus. I'm like that bus to me. <laughs> yeah. 
la la hello la 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 oh, I forgot about the trolley bus there's the trolley bus Alan and the wee mini bus yeah that's what that means instead of saying so they say can you bus because it's backwards. Carrots. <laughs> yeah, there's another guy in England. Um, he calls his uh, subscribers carrots. He's all, can I get some more carrots? <laughs> uh, that guy's pretty funny. Calls his channel Boss Man's Flying Carrot Circus or something. It's, he's a good guy. Those people on here are pretty good. Yeah, the Flying Carrot Circus. That's the thing about being on here. I've, I've met a lot of interesting people. I've got some people going through some stuff at bad times, but for the most part, everybody's pretty good. So, banana phone. <laughs> yep, the banana phone. So, sometimes people are on the verge of a mega quake. Just got the notification California is due for a mega quake. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we all have, have things going on. It's just, yeah, it's just, yeah. Try to get through life as best we can and help each other along, help each other, <laughs> help each other out along the way as best we can as well. And learn to say please and thank you and I'm sorry. <laughs> Learn to keep your hands to yourself. Try not to bite too many people. and It's pretty basic and straightforward, right? Keep your hands to yourself. Don't poke people in the eye. So... You know, people are still asking me, <laughs> the toddlers, you know, this, the stuff that you teach the toddlers, sometimes there needs to be a refresher course for adults because it seems like a lot of them have forgotten that. <laughs> Don't scream at people. Inside voices, please. <laughs> oh, I, I've been in, I've been online and in different chat rooms and stuff and, Sometimes people are live streaming and it's just like they start screaming about, you know, whatever. And there's lots of people that just start screaming because something set them off. I know there's, there's people that do have have some really bad stuff that just goes on and on again. But then there's other people where just the simplest little thing because they don't like somebody, it's just like they start shouting. It's like, I'm, I got to check out. <laughs> I, I got to check out. So I try to keep. Everything chill down to a nice, calm, inside voice, you know. Did anybody see that there's a Mr. Rogers movie coming out finally? Looks kind of interesting. Hopefully they did, did him proper justice. It looks like it's a bunch of clips, more of like a documentary and stuff. So, you know, Mr. Rogers is always... Always a good guy. Always made everybody feel good about themselves. Even the kids who didn't realize that his friend, Handyman Negri, was also the guy who owned the, the department store, the grocery store. And <laughs> you had a lot of the same people doing different jobs and stuff. It was, yeah. 
And if you listened, you could tell that some of the puppets were like the same voices of different people. They didn't try to make it a secret. They were just, you know, it was trying to be make-believe, but still something that was kind of familiar so the kids weren't always being overwhelmed with something new again and again. There's there's that level of familiarity that they could, you know. There's, there's a lot of uh, research, I'm sure, that went into that. So hopefully it'll be a good thing. So, yeah, someone just sent me a, a text asking about our friend, uh, Muddy, Muddy Pug, the cat. Oh, you know about Henrietta? Henrietta Pussycat? Mrs. Wombat sounds a lot like Henrietta. <laughs> My son used to call her Hen Henrietta when she, he was uh, he was little. No, he called her Meow Meow Kitty is what he called her. She's always all, hi there. Can you meow help me with my meow package, please? Meow, meow. <laughs> yeah. Well, for the longest time, we used to call her meow there as well because he reminded her of, of Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty. Of Henrietta. Meow, meow, kitty. <laughs> oh, Hello Kitty. It's so entirely different. Yeah, my, she was she was having a lot of a lot of issues for a while, and I know that her heart was at like ten or twelve percent. She just I don't think she knew how bad her health was until like very very recent. Yeah, she was sick for for months and had the defibrillator vest, and then she had other things that in her personal life that she was trying to work through in the midst of all her illnesses and stuff. And it was just, she went back home with her parents, was there maybe a month before she passed. So, yeah, she was 46. Very, very young. Very, very spunky <laughs> lady. Very awesome. We talked quite a few times and stuff. Enjoyed seeing her in the chats all the time. Yeah, she was there about like two or three weeks with her parents. Always telling us, sending us private chats and stuff on on um, what should we call it on um, Twitter, telling us about her squirrel and stuff. Little Gidget, man, she loved that squirrel. <laughs> yeah, she was home. Yeah. Yeah, she was finally home, and then I guess she was helping out her mom. Her mom wanted her to do stuff for her and stuff, and so, yeah, just. We knew that her passing would be coming soon. Unfortunately, you, you just know the signs are there. You hope against hope that people have a little bit longer, but you – Realistically, you know that their time is short, and you try to help them make the best of it. Yeah, she was she was awesome. <laughs> she she was just always so positive, just always in such a really really good mood. She told me one time that I reminded her of her brother. I said, "Oh, okay. That's good. <laughs> is that a good thing or a bad thing?" But I guess she she and her brother got along well, so. So that was good, but yeah, she was she was a very special lady, and and she's missed by a lot of people in the community. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So she was she was a good lady, and then Juice, we see him popping in every every once in a while and stuff, and he's been through a lot of stuff with. And just having another leg taken off and stuff, and you know, we I talk to him every now and again, and he's 
he's trying to trying to keep positive, but it's just really it's he's been through a lot of stuff, and it's just it's it's really taken a lot out of him. You know, a lot of us go through a lot of things, and you know, again, like I've said, the, we got the 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 negative nation where everybody's trying to help everybody out. It's kind of a, a funny oxymoron and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I thought he drove before, but Jen, my, Mrs. Wombat, she was telling me that um that you no, know, he hasn't driven. He he's gonna have the mods done to his vehicle, then he's gonna learn how to drive. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, and that'll be good because I know his wife is busy doing stuff, and and you know maybe if he's able to to get out more and do stuff more, that'll that'll be good for him. I know it's good for for me to get out and do stuff. <laughs> Whether it's eating something weird or going to work, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Found my other capo. This is different than my other capo. This, I'm all pointing away <laughs> monitor. This is a standard Kaiser. That's coming that makes it Kaiser capo. This part presses down on your strings, and it sounds like you're tuning your guitar up to a different pitch depending on where you put it on the neck. This, yeah, he's he's pretty awesome. This is a cut capo, and it blocks off. Instead of this one here that does all six of your strings, this one here blocks off three. That's pretty cool. I like it. So it sounds like it's so you play really hard to hard to play chords with just like one or two fingers. Makes things super easy. Oh, you never seen these tools? People cut off these pipes. Yeah, people would cut off pipes to make slides. But this is, let me show you the other capo here. Okay, this thing here, here, this thing here clamps down on the strings. These things are called frets, and there's different notes that are here. And usually they'll refer to whatever the note is on the lowest string as to your position of your, your capo, your first chord usually. Usually. Not always, but like here on the the, what is it, the fourth fret there. Let me see. Make sure you gotta make sure you keep your strings straight, not bent. But it just goes just above the fret right there, not on the fret, but just right next to it. And what that does is you can get these chords that, without having to tune it up, they're just higher in pitch. <laughs> See, I play the same thing without this, and I just have to move it where my hand was relative to where it was. It's basically the capos replacing this thing here called the nut. So, and it's like. So it's just like tuning your whole guitar up pitch and lots of people will actually use it when they're singing if they want to sing something they'll, they'll change it and then they'll do different things or if they're playing in because some songs they have these really weird chords and why is filmora coming up sorry that's my software that i use stuff for i'm not sure what that's about but anyways like if the, so what they'll do 
in playing some of these weirder chords that they're, they're, they're referred to as flats. I don't know how much you know about music and stuff. So rather than put your fingers in like a really weird position where you almost need to have five fingers playing the notes, they'll use a capo and they'll play some other chords that will be different. For example, like if you're playing an E minor, or not E minor, uh, E flat, you have this here, but you just play a D. That gives you your note of your E minor rather than trying to play a really or E flat, keep it E minor, E flat, which is really hard to play. That's E flat. D flat. Okay, E flat, D flat. And then A flat or B flat rather. Get an A flat. So you can use it's good because you can use the same chords, but it's it's much more comfortable. And if you know where this is supposed to be on the neck, you can use the chords that you've learned and just move them in different spots relative to where this is. So like if I'm playing my chords G, C, and D here, but I want to play it in, in a different key, I will move, I'll use this and move those up relative like I was doing on the fourth fret right there. It's just right up against the fret like I said. So you can see it. So what I'll do is I'll use that same G. Oops, they're right here. Oops, sorry about that. It's that same shape. This chord is now a B. It's it's confusing, but you have to know relative to this what it's what it sounds like. So you're playing a B, and then that is a B flat to a. A flat. So you're going C, B flat, A flat, and that's an E right there. But I'm using the C shape to play that. Because in order to play this, which is a B, I would have to play it like this. And see how my hand is really stretched right across here? that I was playing is going to be here. It has a different sound to it all together. It actually, it was an A-flat minor. And again, you can kind of see the, the stretching going across. And then the E that I was playing would actually be something uh, like... Like this. See, it's even taking me a while to put my finger. It's not even really sounding that clear. But you see how I have to use my fingers, and it's, it cramps up a lot. So instead, I just use the capo. I get the same sound. It's actually a little bit better because. Some of the chords that I've been substituting when I'm playing in the normal tuning, they have a lot of the same notes repeating. Because, like, short course on music theory, right? But, like, this form of G that I play is actually what they call a G6. And it has my notes in here are a G, E, there's D, 
And then my next note is a G right here, which is an octave higher. And then up here, I've got another D, which is an octave higher of this D. And then I have another G, yet again, in there. It's a little flat on that note right now. But you get those notes ringing together with the different octaves, and it really fills up the sound. And, and all those notes being played together is, is referred to as a chord. And, you know, being around different people, I use the, the cheater versions of chords because the standard G chord is just... It sounds a little bit different, but I like picking up that, that extra D note in there. And what I like about this chord here is I can leave these fingers here just leave them in place anchored on those two strings with the D and the, the G there. And then I just move these two to where you can see it. These two fingers here, I move this one right here onto the next string and this one here. And that gives me what they call a C add nine. Um, I heard it helps people play better with longer fingers. My fingers are short, so I do whatever I can to, uh, to help whatever helps me play better. So, you know. And again, that's what they call a C add nine. It's like a regular C chord, which is more like this. It gives a different sound, but your fingers are kind of stretched out a little bit. So going from here to here to here to here to here to here. Sometimes I know for me, if not, I'm not paying attention, my fingers can get, feel like they get kind of twisted around and tongue-tied. So I just play these easier forms. And all I'm doing is just moving these two fingers down. And then I can come up here and play a D chord. And I've got that same ring finger anchored on that same D note right there on the second string. I can do a D suspended fourth right there. And I can do little jangly things like that. So. So it's fun just messing around with that, playing, you know. I'm entirely self-taught, so I'll hear stuff on the radio, pick stuff up, and then sometimes mess it around, play different chords and different things and stuff, so. kind of mix it up a little bit, have fun playing. You know, I, I enjoy it. I've been playing off and on since I was about 15. Like I said, self-taught and, you know, still have a lot to learn. But it's just learn bits and pieces of stuff. It's,
So it's just it's fun. I, I enjoy it. is trying to remember what songs to play because <laughs> I always I I've got ADD and it also goes into music. I listen to a, a wide variety of all kinds of stuff. So sometimes I'll start playing something, then I'll my pick will like have a mind of its own. And I'm not just kidding. I know better than that. But sometimes I'll play something and then it'll it'll like just mess around, you know, like. By myself, jam, and I'll start playing different stuff and different things and stuff. And just, you know, earlier I was doing the Iron Maiden. Actually, it's Metallica there. They're very similar, the the way they play. But. I prefer, actually, I prefer bass. I'm better at bass. Do I play electric? Here's one of many orphans that I have collected. This guy right here and came just like this. I've polished it up. I actually got it in a pawn shop. 35 bucks. Done a little bit of work on the neck. Just really just setting up everything and stuff. And it plays plays so nice. New strings out of the other day. Sounds like they're still a little, little out of tune. Oops. This is probably my favorite guitar. Right now, this was a gift, uh, Father's Day slash early birthday gift from Mrs. Wombat, my son. Can't even see it so big, he takes up the whole screen. This is a Jackson guitar. This is a 80s style. It looks like a big shark fin. This is what they call the tuxedo finish because it's black and white like a tuxedo. Um, these are inlays. They say they look like shark teeth. Neck is incredibly thin, very fast to play if I could play fast. But, I mean, this was actually designed by my favorite guitar player of all time. This is by – this was designed by a guy named Randy Rhodes who passed away. I really wanted to see him as a kid, but he passed away at the age of 26. He was in a plane crash, and he perished. It was very, very sad. Very talented player. Um, his mother owned a music school. Him and his mother were extremely close. So close, in fact, that when his mother passed away, um, there's a, I've got a video where I went actually went to um, the cemetery where his crypt is, and his mother was placed in the crypt as well. Yeah. I, I honestly believe, and I think, I think Ozzy's even said it, that if Randy... If he did not hook up with Randy, 
when he did, he would his career would have been over with. I mean, because when he hooked up with Randy, they went in such an incredible, extreme direction that people had never heard anything like it before. And it just like it was the resurrection that Ozzy needed. <laughs> Things, some of the songwriting stuff in Black Sabbath before he left, whether everybody knows he got kicked out. He had a problem with with drinking stuff. So he got kicked out of Black Sabbath, and he thought his career was pretty much finished. He was going to put a new band together, but I don't think he really thought it was going to take off as well as it did. And Randy went to audition for him. Just, you know, it's like, okay, here's this guy from Black Sabbath. And he was going to audition for him. He didn't think he was going to get the job. And basically he just plugged in his guitar, started doing some exercises and stuff. And Ozzy hired him before he even played. And he was kind of mad. He was like, he's like, don't you want to hear me play? He goes, I already have. He goes, no, I'm just warming up. So it's, it's incredible that, the talent that this young guy brought to Ozzy's band and, and so much stuff that he's done for, and it's just the short time that he was there and also on earth. And, and I've heard all kinds of stories about Randy, how he's like such a mellow down to earth guy. When the band wasn't on tour doing anything, he'd go, his mom owned a music um, studio. So he, in his off time, he'd go back and start teaching students. It's, it's just like, yeah, I'm Randy. I'm the, your guitar teacher today. Not, I'm Mr. Rockstar. It was just like, it's cool when you hear stories about people like that, you know. But this guitar sounds amazing. It plays amazing. It is. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. I, I love it. I have too many guitars. <laughs> uh. I'm back, yay! Yeah, I've got a, I've got a rack that I actually made to hold my guitars. I probably need to make a couple more out of PVC, and just has slots where they sit. I saw this in a guitar magazine. They had a holder that was made out of wood, and it would hold like five guitars, but it was almost a hundred bucks. I looked at it and I go, I could probably make something that would do the same thing out of PVC pipe, and I did, <laughs> and. I think that project was probably because the fittings are actually more than the actual PVC tubing or PVC pipe, whatever you want to call it. Um, then I put pipe foam to protect the delicate areas of the guitar. I think that project probably was like 15 or 20 bucks. So between 15 bucks versus a hundred, that gives me more money <laughs> to find orphan instruments. Actually, this one was. <laughs> A Christmas gift for Mrs. Wombat. Um, I don't remember how many years ago it was. It's, it's been a while. I've had it, but it was. It didn't have the sticker. It was this color blue. I really like it. It's called Ice Blue Metallic. I mean, I've got this to keep the back from getting scratched up. Just contact paper. But if you can see the finish on it, it's a really nice finish. Ice Blue Metallic is what they call that. So when I got it, this part here that they call the pick guard, that was black, and it had just one pickup back here. And I was looking, and I go, oh, I could probably put two pickups in there. And I put these in. They're a different style. They're called P90s. And then I bought this online, this bowling ball-looking stuff. You can kind of see it a little bit better. It's like Mother of Pearl. Simulated, of course. <laughs> Put the switch in, and an ode to Brian Setzer. I've got a die on my volume knob. When I bought this, I didn't realize that this is actually supposed to be cut out for a different bridge setup that had a whammy bar on it. So I'll space out a little bit, but that's you know that's neither here nor there. Put new strap buttons on there. Added the sticker. Changed the tuners. 
so they're more stable. They stay in tune better. So, <laughs> yeah, it's – yeah, if you, you can – I like to challenge myself to try to make things. Sometimes they go good, sometimes they don't. But if I see something that I go, yeah, I could probably make that, you know. Yeah, the, it, it just looks really good with the the whole the whole overall scheme. You can see a little bit. I can't really get there, but like the whole overall scheme, the blue with the with the black accents against some other pearl. It just it just looks really nice. And then with the black and the, the script of the logo, with the tuners, it just, I don't know. Maybe I'm weird. I just, I find some things aesthetically appealing, so. This is DIY with the Wombat. Here's another thing I made out of PVC, and I spray painted it so it looks like it's made out of metal. This, when I go into Google Hangouts, I have a microphone on here. I've got my webcam. I've got my bag here that has my extension for my headphones that goes to my earbuds. And it just doesn't take up very much room. Roof's kind of low. But then the base of it is just PVC. I think this was probably like with the fittings. Again, that's the most expensive part of all this. This was probably like five bucks to make. And maybe, I don't know. When I factor in the time I painted and let the paint dry and paint it again, probably about two hours worth of work. The actual cutting and assembling, probably about half an hour. But it's just, you know, it works really well. Sometimes I'll go into Google Hangouts with Mrs. Wombat. This microphone is extremely sensitive. It picks her up. So I'll just hook it up. We've got two monitors. So I'll see one monitor, see what everybody's doing. She's watching the other one. This one's on me, the camera, because she's kind of shy. So she, she's going to go come on here sometime with me soon. But she's kind of, you know, like I said, she's kind of shy. But this was just, I was thinking... How can I make something to do Google Hangouts that's going to be – because I was at the first I was like setting up a tripod with this guy, another microphone stand with this microphone, and it was just like – it was it was a lot of work. I just figured, you know, make something simple so I can put it away when I need it. I can grab it, just grab on the go. All my stuff's here. This is ready to go. And it's not – ugly sprinkler tubing <laughs> anymore <laughs> since I painted it. The magic of PVC pipe. Take this apart. This, this was not my idea. I saw this online. I still need to paint it. But this has a very robust base. It's not going to tip over or go anywhere. And then it has – I just misplaced this the other day. There's another piece that goes in here, holds this, makes it super tight, doesn't tip over. Then there's another piece. I can't get this all under the screen because it's so big. But there's this piece that walks on top of it all. And it's probably about a good five and a half feet tall when everything's all assembled. And then I just got this light from Home Depot. Just clamps... To the top of that like so usually what I do is I I have some gaffers tape and then I'll tape 
tape this down so it locks in place. And then I'll use this. Usually I'll point it up at the ceiling to kind of let the light diffuse rather than feeling like I'm being interrogated under a spotlight. Or another thing I do too is I will use a couple sheets of parchment paper over this to make it more of a diffuser and stuff. <laughs> Backdrops. I've got a few other backdrops and stuff too. I just leave this one up all the time. But what's really cool is I actually have, and I did that, I showed it in a video that I did. It's I, I made a backdrop out of a bunch of PVC pipe and I got tired of tripping over it all the time. And I got to thinking there's got to be an easier way to do all this. So this is not to scale, but basically what I did was I took my frame all apart. I made two holes in the ceiling with um, some hooks. Yeah, and this is one that could interrogate me, but <laughs> I do nothing wrong. Besides, I give her, I give her access to, to my Twitter, my Facebook, my phone. It's like I don't have anything to hide. I know some people. Why you do that? It's like I got nothing to hide. <laughs> I trust her, you know, it's like one of those things. Anyways, like I said, got this piece of PVC pipe. I have one that's about five feet long. There is a cap on one end that has an eye hook that goes through it. And there's one on the other end and it just hangs from the roof with some eye bolts. And then I just clamp my backdrop. I've got three of these clamps. And I've got them put away somewhere. I got them really cheap at Walmart. They're like six bucks for like a pack of six of them. And they're just these spring clamps. They're black and red over by the paint department. If you ever end up at Walmart, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But I just clamp, I clamp my backdrop like so. Let's see if I have This will work for, for demonstration purposes. So anyways, I just hang it up like so, put the clamps on it, and then it just free hangs from the, from the ceiling. So all you see is just the backdrop. You don't see PVC. You don't see the clamps. It just hangs. I have another one that's a forest scene. I have quite a few other ones and stuff. This is Mrs. Wombat's favorite one, so I use this for just about everything. Um, when I do the Google Hangouts, I get a ladder, pop off my clamps, got another one of these already hanging from the roof in the bedroom, put those in there, clamp it up, boom, ready to go. Total setup, like I said, I've got the thing, put up the backdrop, hook up the other monitor, take my thing in there, plug everything in. It's probably like five minutes, if even that long, and I'm ready to go. <laughs> then when it's done, Bring everything back up here, clamp it back up, and it's it's good to go. It's not in everybody's way, which is nice. I'm sure everybody appreciates that I stay out of the way. Happy wife, have the blah, 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 blah. happy wife, happy life. Very very true, very true. Yeah, it's for me. It's just about you know whatever works. First is function. Then next is, you know, form. Functionality over form. Try to keep things so they still look relatively pleasing to the eye, not so big eyesore. Because Mrs. Wombat is very patient with me with all my videoing that I do and everything. So I don't want to have something that looks ugly and she's going to have to go, why did you put that there? She's very patient, very nice, but, you know, I don't want to. Upsetter. Finding ways to save and to decorate. Yeah, it's you just like I said, this was like I think about 15 bucks. And it looks like a door from I don't know, somewhere. It's all faded and stuff. Everybody who sees this thinks it's a cabinet. They go, wow, how old is that cabinet behind you? Is it antique? Go, no, it's a <laughs> it's just a backdrop. Some backdrops look really good online, and then when you get them, they're they're not very good. But other ones, I've actually seen a couple which, which are actually better than their picture leads you to believe. So, But the forest scene, I really like the forest scene. I might change this out sometime for the forest one. 
is it just makes you feel like you're in the great outdoors. And then when I throw a light over here, it looks like the sun's over here. I watch a lot of videos that show people how to do stuff with lighting and getting creative and stuff. And keeps me out of trouble. <laughs> uh, it gives me something to do when I'm not at work. So, but it's, it's fun. I enjoy it, you know. Very creative. Look forward to seeing what? The forest backdrop. Okay, I can get it. Just take a minute. I'll be right back. And usually what I do is I just lay it right over this one. Making all kinds of rackets. Sorry about that. So sorry. Yeah, I'm probably going to be on here for probably just another 10 minutes or so. Let me move this car out of the way so I don't knock it over. That was my. That's why I was taking those with gaffers. Anyways, quick change of scenery. Here are the clips I was talking about. They're orange on the front. Let's make sure I'm not hanging this upside down because I've done that before. Never really hung up anything live TV before. There we go. Want to make sure everything's oriented in the direction it should be going. Like I said, I just clamp it over this thing here. I need a spinning chair to stand on. Because that's always good when you can live dangerously. It adds more excitement to things. Anyways. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> so anyways, there is the forest. There's some wrinkles because it was folded up, but usually after having it hanging up for a little bit, I might just have it held up with two clamps right now. over a little bit more so it's not hanging down so poorly as it is. Stretch a little bit tighter. See, there we go. All better. See? It's like camping. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of like this one better than the door. Just, just do. If I had a little bit more room, I think I'd pull myself. I'm, I'm right now. I'm like right against it. If I had a little bit more room in the area that I'm using, I'd probably like to be about four feet away from it, and that way you could kind of see some of the other stuff because the camera is focusing mostly on me. Rather than on the, and you'd see more detail, and it looked like I was actually kind of in the forest. So, 
So yeah, Mrs. Wombat hasn't walked for for a couple of years. She's she, not the best of of health. But but that's the forest. <laughs> I bought a winter scene that I thought was going to be like really cool. The picture made it look like really, really awesome. Then when I got it, it was like, it was bad. It was like a photograph of a photograph of a photograph of a photograph. And the wrinkles never came out of it, no matter what I did to it. In the nylon that these are made out of, you can't iron them or they'll just melt. So turn that into a drop cloth, <laughs> did some painting with that yeah it just it just gives you the vibe a friend of mine he's a boy scout um what they call him scout master and he was talking about going down to the place where they meet and doing a video and stuff he knows that i have you know access to you know some webcams and i've got a camcorder and some other stuff that i use he goes he goes, yeah, I, I saw what you're doing. He goes, I was going to have somebody help me, but they've been busy. He goes, he goes, you think you could help me, you know, do it? So I said, sure. I said, where, where do you want to do it? I said, he goes, well, I'll see what I do. I go, and I told him about this. I go, I've got a backdrop. I said, I could bring it to your house, sit up there, and things are kind of busy. So we ended up just setting it up at work. After work one day, brought out my PVC stand, I'll take it apart, put it all together. Do some clips on it. Got one of those lights like I showed you coming from a certain way. Had him sitting a little distance, and he was able to give his his speech. It was a video presentation for, for one of his scouts that was getting promoted, but my boss was going to be out of town, so they had a video that they could they could use, and everybody was like, wow, what, where were you at when you shot that? They go, what do you mean? They go, they go, what force is that? I want to go hiking there. He goes, he goes, oh, that was one of the guys at work that helped me out. They go, wow, because they really thought he was sitting in the middle of the woods. It was, it was pretty cool. So, and then I got to start doing more stuff with OBS and doing some green screen. I've got some stuff I, I put up, some green uh, material. I actually have a green screen, but it's, it's real heavy, and being where it is, you can actually see the fabric in it. So I've got a sheet that I use that's green, and then I just kind of edit stuff out. So it looks like there's a couple of videos. There's one it looks like that I have where I was trying to mess with doing going live, but I was having some internet issues. Got a fake mustache, and it looks like I'm in the middle of an airplane. That That's all done with the green screen. People are like, where would you get that done? Go, oh, I did it at home with the green screen. They go, wow. <laughs> Yeah, I like the trees, though. The trees are, are nice. Makes me think I'm in the forest. I could just set up a light and tell people, hey, I'm out in the middle of the woods. I, I have somewhere. I'm not sure where it is. Actually, I think I have two of them now. I think I inherited one or maybe two. I might have three, actually. One of those noisemakers where it's a machinery. You plug it in. It does wave sounds. Um, the one that has like wave sounds and other things, and it does crickets. So it sounds like you're out in the middle of the woods and you hear the crickets chirping and stuff. It sounds very, very realistic. So and I got some other props that I got from my boss's wife. She used to do a bunch of stuff with kids and puppets and stuff, but she's got out of that. So I inherited a lot of the props, not the puppets, but do a Yeti search. Yeah, searching for a Yeti. I have a Yeti costume, but I think it shrunk. <laughs> no, it was when I bought it. I didn't look at the tag, and it's it's a little snug. I have a couple pictures that I put up on Facebook where I'm wearing it in front of the Christmas tree. One of those Yeti onesie suits I got at Walmart. Yeah, <laughs> get everything at Walmart. It seems like, but yeah, I've got a I've got a Yeti suit that. I was gonna. I bought to do some some stuff with, and got you know. I find I find stuff, and I go. I could use this as a prop, like this cup. I could I could do. There's stuff in here, so I'm not gonna dump it. But I could I could do stuff with this cup. I could turn it into a megaphone. I could turn it into um, 
with some other props and stuff too. I could turn into like eyeballs or a mouthpiece for like an alien or so it's just kind of finding stuff. Yeah, I didn't grow my clothes shrunk. Yeah, doing too many snack reviews as I, I actually think it's the energy drinks. Those things have a lot of sugar in them. And I think that's kind of kind of caused me to gain a wee bit of weight. But other than that, I'm all right. So with all that said, I am I am going to go. We've got things to do tonight. Hang out with Mrs. Wombat. Maybe watch a little bit of Twilight Zone. <laughs> well, the the clothes shrink. That's yeah. It depends on what it is. Some things, some things you buy. They, they do really good, and it's like anywhere. Sometimes you find clothes that, that'll that'll fit you, and then you wash them once and they shrink. Um, I've bought a couple shirts. Actually, I bought quite a few of my band shirts at, at Hot Topic. One shirt that I have, my Pearl Jam shirt, it looks like I just bought it yesterday. It has not faded. It's not shrunk. And then I had a Dropkick Murphys shirt. First time I washed it, it went from being an extra large to like a small it shrunk like like you wouldn't believe so i'll have to figure out something to do with that because nothing i try not to let anything really go to waste i try to incorporate something that once had a purpose for something else but yeah we're gonna yeah don't drunk tweet don't don't do anything we're going to stay home and probably watch some Twilight Zone because we have that on DVD. And I also have Rick and Morty, which Mrs. Wombat's not a big fan of. Um, and then also I just picked up the other day because it was on sale really cheap was uh, Stranger Things, the first, uh, first season, the Netflix show. So since we both grew up in the 80s, we, I thought we'd probably like it. I've only seen one episode of it so far, so I'm looking forward to watching some of the rest of it. I'm way behind with my with my TV watching with just everything going on. But I'm I'm still rambling. So 